Hello there, my name is Justin Mahaffey. I'm a friend of Holly Lean's and Holly had asked me to do an interview, answer some questions um, for your class. And I am happy to oblige, even though I'm not quite comfortable talking about myself and it's a bit of a personal subject, all good, happy to do it. But if I seem like awkward at times, that's probably why. Anyways, um, I'll go through the list of questions real quick. Actually, I should probably introduce why I'm like looking down every once in a while, I'm, like going like this, which might be odd um, from your perspective, but this is my buddy Dolce. Dolce! Yeah, she's chilling. So that's what's going on down there. Anyways, um, I'll go over the questions really quick so you know what to expect and um, stay organized. I'll try not to digress too much. I have kind of a knack for that, especially on stuff like this, which just kind of gets my noodle going. Anyways, um, Introduce yourself. What was public school like? Do you have any unique experiences based on having an orthopedic impairment? Um, were there any accommodations offered to you? What types of challenges have you faced? What have you been able to overcome? Have there been any things that people would assume you cannot do that you were able to do? And uh, last, but certainly not least, have any teachers had an impact on you with regard to how you were accepted, treated, etc. Um, cool. So starting from the top, again, my name is Justin Mahaffey. Uh, I'm 28 years old. I um, was born um, missing a hand. I'm a congenital amputee um, below the elbow of my left arm is uh, gone. So I have a very beautiful stump. Gorgeous. Anyways, <laughs> um, Let's see, I, uh, I was um, I'm from California. Uh, Dad is Navy, was Navy. I was born in San Diego uh, on base and I've otherwise lived kind of all over California. Um, my school, this deals a lot with like my early life in school and I think mostly I'm gonna just focus on kind of like elementary school for the most part, I guess. It's kind of all the same really um, when it comes to this stuff, but uh, I grew up in San Jose. I lived in San Jose, California in um, the South Bay and um, um, went to high school in a town called El Dorado Hills um, where I met Holly and um, where she incredibly graciously uh, contacted me before I even got started and introduced herself and uh, made life a lot better for me and I'm vastly appreciative of that to this day. Um, but currently, I, I live and work in San Francisco Bay Area, just outside of San Francisco, in a beautiful little town called Livermore. Come chill. It's gorgeous here. Weird name. Cool place. Um, but uh, I work as a bartender and a waiter. I was raised in a restaurant, and I've kind of always stuck with restaurants. And um, I'm also um, a musician. I um, do a lot of recording uh, for vocals and um, play a little harmonica um, around town. And we have a lot of live music going on down here. And uh, I'm also a student. I'm going to school to be a teacher, like you, I believe. You are in a class preparing teachers, um, studying philosophy. Anyways, um, that is my introduction. Uh, what was public school life? Did you have any unique experiences based on having an orthopedic impairment? Um, school is weird. I think it's kind of weird for everyone and that's just how it goes. Uh, beyond that, how it was unique is always been difficult for me to say because um, it's kind of like a relative thing. This is all I know and um, how I was treated is, is all I know, just as it's all you may know with um, whatever peculiarities you might have overtly or inside whatever um but some things that stand out to me were um that affected me anyways and that i've given a lot of thought to over the years um is simply uh like what i think of it um early school is is kind of interesting it's a bit it's a bit of a, a jungle it's kind of like this social war zone <laughs> and uh it's it's pretty crazy and for me, I think like my, if I had any kind of like unique position, it was simply that my, the nature of my difference, which we all have so many differences, um, but when it comes to kids and very obvious differences, such as physical ones, um, you're really bound to be called out. You're bound to be treated this way or that way. 
um, because of it. It's just an easy target. And kids go for easy targets. Anyways. Uh, it, it wasn't really all that bad um, for me. I experienced some like weird stuff that I still laugh about to this day. Um, <laughs> I was uh, regularly called. Um, oh, man, this sucks. Um, <laughs> I was uh, referred to as penis arm. Yeah. And uh, just because of like the, the stump, the nub. I always thought it was actually kind of funny. Um, as weird as that might be, I just thought it was funny it certainly wasn't expressed in a funny way but it was just a very strange association um okay um otherwise like um being in all the other reindeer games i uh, was uh, a little difficult and very frustrating for me as a, a young extremely competitive dude um so when it came to like sports and stuff i was way more intense than i ought to have been um, which is a good thing actually i mean in my opinion, it just didn't help me make any friends. That's for sure. I was more interested in crushing on the basketball court and outrunning everyone um, than like preserving their feelings, um, which I had little concern for as they had little concern for mine. Oh man, this stuff is so odd. I don't really think about this stuff too much. Um, but um, anyways, uh, my actually the, the oddest experiences that I had um, in school with relation to this and the fact that I was a pretty rambunctious kid um, were um, with the staff, actually, um, which might be relevant to you guys. While um, my few friends were going to uh, what was called, I think, ELP, Extended Learning Program, where they were doing like, cool projects that I was doing at home just for fun, like building rockets, whatever. Um, they would pull me out of class several times a week to... Uh, to go to one of two locations on campus where I was essentially analyzed. It was incredibly awkward and uncomfortable and detrimental to lots of things about me. Uh, it, it really like progressed the, the alienation of, of myself, you know, from my peers. Um, when I was absent for a lot of classes being like pulled out by an adult all the time, it was really, it was just really embarrassing. Really. Uh, I went to, like I said, one of two places, one which, one of which was called The Love Room, which is incredibly awkward, um, with a woman named uh, Miss Rose, if I recall correctly, and she spent her time attempting to distract me with toys and asking me very, like, prying kind of, like, psychological questions that I, I don't think I ever answered any more than would allow me to continue playing with toys. Um, and then the other place was with this dude who I do not hold in the highest regard even to this day, um, that, uh, he would just pull me into his office and he would, he would ask me extremely loaded questions and have me do like just silly things and just like analyze me, just like try to pick up my brain. And I didn't really like that very much. It was, um, it kind of gave me a bit of a bad, uh, idea towards like staff and adults and you know my my elders whatever and authority perhaps but um always asked me a load of questions i remember one time he gave me the most he gave me the most he made me so upset about it and um it was the when i actually told my mom this was going down and she had no idea this was going down um the communication was apparently not necessary for mom but um he had asked me to draw a picture of my family which i did and i didn't include myself because i was i think it's really more of a semantic thing than how I view myself as a part of my family, but I didn't draw myself and he just kind of went nuts on that. And anyways, it was extremely upsetting. And, uh, but just whatever, man. Anyways, um, it's, it's hard to say like how any of this like r relates um, to my arm. I think it just, I think it just really made me like stand out and um, become the, what is it? There's an expression for it, the nail that sticks up kind of thing. And it got hammered. And it it kind of sucked overall. But I still had a lot of fun. I, I had really good friends. I had very few friends. But the friends I had, I, I knew they were my friends because of me. And not necessarily because of how I look. And that was really important to me. And it remains a very important thing to me today. The quality of someone's character um, is, is something I find to be very important and I was very fortunate and not very fortunate in being able to uh, understand the value of that at a young age and so that is probably one of the biggest lessons I learned in school 
Um, let's see, let's, let's move on here. Are there any accommodations offered to you? Um, no, I don't, I don't think I expected any, I didn't, I didn't express any interest in being accommodated. I was actually kind of, um, and averse to the idea of being accommodated and I, I didn't have any uh, like mobility things either so there would have been very little to accommodate frankly um, in my mind I mean overall and, and this is something I find common with a lot of people um, um, in my uh, culture if you will which I consider to be one a very interesting culture because it's not one bound by you know race or background it just it just happens to people you just become an amputee you're born one you become one, it doesn't matter. But as soon as that happens, your position and, and the way that people see you within society, if you will, or just the public, uh, becomes different. Uh, it just becomes totally different. And it's a very difficult thing for a lot of people to uh, manage. I was fortunate in that I grew up in that and I, I was never, I knew nothing different but, but that. Um, but um, for other people who lose things who lose limbs or become a part of my culture um, it is a very difficult transition because a lot of and this relates to early school too I, I had hoped to touch on this um, but it's a difficult thing to just point out um, a lot of what I, I noticed about early school is it's it's a socialization process right and it's a very important one and for me because of my my obvious difference I wasn't afforded the, the standard socialization experience in fact, I was I was very much pushed out of it, and I'm very I feel very fortunate for that because it allowed me to I think be myself sooner than I might have been otherwise. Because in that time, a lot of what one becomes is what one experiences. Um, impressionable kids being impressionable kids, you take on a lot of qualities of someone else, and I think that those qualities end up contributing to one's own beliefs, one's own values, and one's own one one's own pursuits, regardless of how inherent they are to you or not um, and so I was lucky in that I, I, I learned who I was very quickly because I wasn't allowed to I wasn't really given the opportunity of being anyone else but me um, and whether I liked that or not is was perhaps a different story at the time but I'm cool I dig it um, what types of challenges have you faced um, I think um, this one goes goes pretty well with the next question which is what have you been able to overcome um i think really the only challenge i've experienced um is 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 the expectations of other people is the preconceptions of other people and and just like the the disparity between my understanding of things and someone else's understanding of things simply based on the fact that we have an obvious difference but the real irony is um maybe the tragedy is that we all have those differences. Mine's just very obvious. And there are a great many other people with very obvious differences as well. But um, if physical diversity makes us that different, then I wonder how impactful psychodiversity really is. So I think it's very important um, that we all respect each other's differences and our each other's perspectives and, and not think little of them or not think less of them because of those differences. It affords them a completely unique perspective on the world and it takes all kinds to um, accomplish great things. So um, my challenges were, first of all, stomaching the fact that I was preconceived to be uh, less capable. It's very common for someone to meet me and assume that, and this often sounds crazy to some people, but um, a lot of times when I encounter someone, they will assume that I have some sort of cognitive deficiency in addition to having a physical abnormality. I don't know how the two are associated, frankly, but um, they are in, in the minds of some people. Um, and so that's a difficult thing to swallow as a young person who doesn't necessarily understand that the other person just doesn't understand. <laughs> so um, like for me, that just affected me. Um, and how I, I thought about myself and it, it made me very much consider um, my own cognitive effectiveness. And um, so a challenge I overcame was just basically understanding that something that Einstein said was true, um, that everyone is a genius um, and 
if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, then you'll be disappointed, something like that. But in my mind, everyone, I think we all we all take for granted our, our supreme intellect. I think some of the simplest things that we do are very profound when you really break it down. And that to me makes people brilliant. And um, so, but to recognize that about myself in light of the fact that I wasn't treated that way or that I was addressed as being less than that was difficult. It was a difficult path because um, we at a young age have a very strong pr proclivity to learn from and, and almost become what others think of us and what others, how others treat us. You know, um, I think we all know how important those years are. Um, we may not always realize just how comprehensively they can affect us. However, uh, let's move on here. Let's see. Um, the thing that I overcame that people would assume uh, would be difficult for me. Um, uh, it's interesting how um, attached we are to our own bodies and our own anatomies. It's uh, it surprises me how surprised people are to see me uh, tie my shoes. You know, um, just to put it like on the bottom end. But um, I was a, um, a fairly successful wrestler throughout uh, compulsory school, and um, it was really just because I enjoyed. <laughs> that sounds so bad. Uh, I really, <laughs> I like beating people with two hands. I don't know. It's kind of, it's, it's, uh, I, and I lost to plenty of them too. Don't get me wrong. But um, it was, it was always quite the experience for me. Uh, it was a huge motivator in, in my earlier years to best the people who that thought little of me, um, and in, in a way to inspire them. Like a, the best, I think the best satisfaction I got out of it um, was that. I may have changed someone's opinion about how they see other people and I hope hopefully have uh, inspired them to be more than what they were before I pinned them, something like that. Um, oh, this is so strange to talk about oneself like this. Anyways, um, and have a last uh, question. I talk way too long, it's terrible. Um, have any teachers had an impact on you with regard to how you were accepted, treated, etc. Um, I think um, with with reference to uh, being pulled out of class, as I said, for those things, and the teachers that allowed that, whether they had any kind of play on that or or, or not, I don't know if the people who pulled me out of class were themselves technically teachers. Uh, I think they had a very negative um, impact on how I was accepted and how I was treated because they only emphasized my differences and that's not a helpful thing for a kid that's already trying to <laughs> integrate themselves into a group because we all just want to be together, I think. Um, yeah, um, so I think in, in that sense, it was very negative. Um, and uh, beyond that, it's I'm trying to separate the fact that I was an extremely rambunctious child um, from, from my physical uh, thing uh, I experienced, I had a lot of uh, friction with teachers all through school. Um, anyways, not necessarily related to my arm, I don't think, or my hand rather. Um, but I did have some great experiences with uh, teachers who inspired me in a way that frankly has nothing to do with, with my body. And and almost everything I've experienced has, has little to do with my body. I think that should be like an overarching theme in this is that I'm like, I don't put too much clout in it. I may have been affected by it in, in big ways, but for the most part, I'm not, I'm not my body. If I want, if I wanted anyone to know anything about me, it's that I'm not my body. Um, and part of that was actually inspired by some teachers that I really dug, um, philosophy teachers, um, of a philosophy teacher and uh, a couple of English teachers. I really dig, uh, literature and philosophy, basically anything, um, cerebral. I really like, um, the mind and the freedom that one can attain by just using the mind. And so I had some teachers really inspire me in that way, just by sharing with me um, excellent literature and um, praising me for my writing and, um, and uh, poetry. I really enjoy writing, which is just an extension of, of thinking. So for me, it was a huge compliment to be uh, lifted up by um, uh, in particular, I had a really wonderful teacher, Holly might know, uh, Mrs. Moore, at 
Oak Ridge High School in El Dorado Hills was a junior and uh, she was a really cool teacher and she she really uh, she lifted me up quite a bit in regards to my effectiveness in something I thought to be very important uh, which was my writing as well as a teacher uh, in elementary school who submitted my submitted my work to some thing and that I didn't I don't remember too well but um, and that went well and that was very uh, uplifting for me and those were very positive effects so I think what they did was they they just um, they identified something that was very important to me and um, recognized the, the quality in it or at least a quality in it uh, whether it was objectively a quality or not I don't know but they dug it and that was all that mattered to me um, because regardless of I don't know who you are and how other people see you I think the teacher serves a very important role in regards to um, validation I think they can anyways which is why it can be so negatively impactful when a teacher you know, like comes down on you or treats you poorly and it's just not necessary um, but um, those are all the questions I hope I haven't spoken too long I hope you've gotten something out of it um, I have a hard time staying on topic I apologize for that if there are any further questions I'd be more than happy to answer um, I uh, work with a, a lot of people um, with um, cognitive and physical abnormalities um, just I hang out with people and uh, I do a lot of things related to that and I'm always happy to help um, yeah so uh, feel free to let Holly know if you have any questions I'd be happy to get back to you thanks so much for your time and I wish you all luck in your course have fun